Hey guys, MT here. So in this video, I'm gonna tackle a little bit more of a technical maintenance item, and that is the CVT transmission fluid. Now, if you look in your maintenance booklet, you'll see that Subaru tells you you should be inspecting this fluid about every 30,000 miles. If you're in severe driving conditions, it says you should replace it about every 25,000 miles. So what I did, when we hit 30,000 miles, I took it into the dealer and I wanted to have a drain and flush done on it and they said they could do it. Uh, come to find out, what they ended up doing was basically a drain and refill of the pan, which was only five quarts out of the 13 quarts of fluid it holds. So they didn't really do what I wanted them to, but um, that's okay. So now we're at 100,000 miles and in this video, I'm gonna try and replace as much of that fluid as I can. I want to make it simple, straightforward, and as easy as possible. Please, if you are enjoying these videos and they're helping you out, take a moment and hit that subscribe button below. Thank you a bunch. Let's get into it. Start with popping your hood up. You're going to need to get in there and jack your car up so that it's level and really secure. It doesn't need to be perfectly level. Just try and get it close. This is a really good point right here to place your car on a jack stand. Now you can work from below and remove this transmission cover. You'll need a 12 millimeter socket to take the bolts out. And you can use a flathead screwdriver to get out a couple of the plastic retainer clips. Again, you don't have to remove this plastic cover, but it will make it a lot easier to get to your fill port on the left side of the transmission. Now grab some good nitrile gloves and a drain pan and we'll drain the oil out of the transmission. You're going to need a eight millimeter Allen socket for the fill plug and a 14 millimeter socket for the drain plug. I started with the fill plug. It takes a little bit of effort to break these free. Don't forget the gasket, mine got stuck on the transmission and then wipe the area clean. Loosen up the drain plug and remove it and be prepared to take a sample of the oil while it's draining if you're into that. Make sure your drain pan is large enough. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna get out, so I used another container to catch a little bit extra fluid. I ended up only getting about five and a half quarts out. I thought I'd try something here, being that the drain plug port is kind of recessed into the pan, and so I jacked up the left side of my car and was able to drain a little bit more oil out of the pan. Once the oil stops draining, you can lower your car back onto the jacks. At this point, spend a few minutes and get your plugs cleaned up, remove the old gaskets, and use a cleaner of your choice. I use carburetor cleaner, and for some reason, some of the grime on there is pretty tough, so I had to switch to a stainless steel brush. It's most important that you just get your plugs clean and dry, and then you can put on the new gaskets. And then at this point, they'll be ready to be installed. Clean the area around your drain plug port. Go ahead and install your drain plug. And I recommend having a good torque wrench to make sure that you get the plugs at the correct tightness. Torque the drain plug to 22.9 foot-pounds. It's not required, but I use a little bit of torque stripe as a visual indicator if it breaks loose. Now this next part is up to you if you want to do it. I'm going to show you how I tried to flush out as much of the old fluid as I can. I'm going to do that by utilizing the transmission's fluid lines that go to the heat exchanger where it exchanges heat with the coolant. Basically one line comes out of the transmission, goes through the heat exchanger, exchanges heat with the coolant, and then goes back into the transmission. This is a view from below, and these two rubber hoses are what you need to remove. You can use a pair of slip jaw pliers to remove the clamps and then just wiggle off the hoses. The front port is the oil coming out of the transmission and going through the heat exchanger. 
and the rear port is where the oil that is slightly cooler now returns back into the transmission. What I'm doing here is I took a bottle and put one of the black hoses into it and then I blew low pressure compressed air into the other black hose just to blow out any of the old oil that's in those lines and the heat exchanger. Here you can see how much of the old oil I got out of it. It's not very much, but I'm going for as much as I can get. You can see my dirty old oil. This is everything I got out of it. It's about five and a half quarts. After blowing out the old oil from the heat exchanger, I installed some 3 8 inside diameter vinyl tubing on the forward port where the oil will be coming out and use a zip tie to secure it on there, keep it from blowing off. You can also install the rear black hose and its clamp back onto the rear port as we won't be needing to use this. The clear hose I ran up to a 2 liter soda bottle that holds a little bit over 2 quarts of oil. Now it's time to get your CVT fluid out. In order to pump the fluid into the transmission I went and bought a brand new garden sprayer from Home Depot for about 10 bucks. I made sure it was nice and clean on the inside and filled it up and ran a little bit of fluid through the hose just in case there's any particles in there. You wanna make sure you remove the tip so that it's not spraying fluid. You just want the fluid to flow straight out. And now you can start filling the transmission. You're going to need to refill your garden sprayer if that's the method you're using. Pump the CVT fluid into the transmission pan until the fluid starts to come out of the fill plug hole. Once it's full, install the plug just finger tight. At this point, it's easier to have someone in the car to start and stop the car. Basically what I did was I had my wife start the car while I monitored the level of fluid coming out into the two liter soda bottle. I would run it until I got about two quarts out and then she would turn off the car. Then I would empty out the two liter soda bottle and refill the transmission pan with new fluid and install the fill plug just finger tight. Then we would do it again. She would start the car, I would monitor the fluid level, and I would give her the sign to turn it off at the right time. Then here we go again, refill the garden sprayer, fill the transmission pan till fluid comes out of the fill hole and install the fill plug finger tight. Now the third and fourth time we did something different. I had her start the car, then immediately shift into reverse, then neutral, then drive, and then work your way back up to park. And if I gave her the signal at any time to turn off the car, she would do it no matter what position the transmission was in. My goal is to get as much of the old fluid out as possible. Then again, we would refill the garden sprayer, fill the transmission pan, install the fill plug finger tight, and do it a fourth time while changing gears while oil is flowing. After doing this four times, we had put about 13 quarts of fluid into the transmission, and the color change of the fluid between each flush was becoming unnoticeable. So I removed the clear vinyl tubing and installed the black tube and its clamp back onto the transmission. And then filled the transmission pan again until fluid came out of the fill hole and installed the plug finger tight. So the next step is to start the engine and let the transmission suck up some of that fluid and get rid of some of the air bubbles. You can then remove the fill plug and no oil should come out, which means you need to top it off while the engine is running. Add CVT fluid until it comes out of the fill port and install the fill plug finger tight. 
In order for you to monitor your CVT transmission temperature, you're going to need to get a Bluetooth OBD2 reader and have that connected to your phone. The goal here is to do this when your transmission is cool because as the fluid warms up, it's going to expand. So we want to fill the transmission in a cool state to where it is full, so that once we warm up to the correct temperature, all we have to do is pull the fill plug and let the excess oil drain out. Basically, you need to let your engine run and monitor the temperature of the CVT fluid while periodically shifting through the gears from park to reverse to neutral to drive, giving it a few seconds to pause in each gear. The goal here is to have fluid just barely coming out of your fill port while the transmission fluid temperature is between 95 and 113 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to be shooting for just over 100 degrees. Remember, you need to be doing this while the engine is running. I removed my fill plug at 97 degrees and let the fluid continue to come out until I was at 100 degrees and then reinstalled the fill plug. You can use whichever oil you want. I'm going to use the factory Subaru CVTF-2 oil. It is a little pricey, but I recommend that you use the factory Subaru oil. Shop around a little and try and find the best price you can. You can then turn off your engine and torque the fill plug to 36.9 foot-pounds. At this time, I've got more than a thousand miles on the car since doing the CVT fluid change and it's been operating just fine. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty easy job to do. You need to put your plastic cover back on if you took it off, lower your car off of the jacks, close the hood up and take it for a test drive to make sure it's operating correctly. Here's a quick look at the fluid samples I took as I was doing a drain and sequential flushes compared to the new fluid. You'll see that the color change became very unnoticeable. Overall, I think next time I do this, which may be in about say 60,000 miles, I probably would not do so many flushes. I would probably just drain the pan and do one, maybe two flushes and then call it good. All right, I hope this video helps somebody out. Please hit that subscribe button below, and as always, leave any questions or comments below and I'll try to get to them. Thanks, guys.